afternoon and the evening. Um, yeah, I'm here to present my favorite ggplot2 extension packages. And my favorite it was very difficult to pick them. So I will show you um, a series of, of them and also list some more because I actually couldn't decide. So again, a bit of background for myself. So I'm a computational ecologist uh, working at the Leibniz Institute here in Berlin. And I'm also a freelance data visualization specialist. And with this, I'm consulting clients. Um, I give workshops and seminars like this one here. And I'm coding a lot. And of course, that's why I'm here um, mostly in R. So I think 99% of my designs up to now are done with ggplot and other R libraries. So I got into R 2008 for the first time, not really understanding what I'm doing, then a bit more into base R and statistical modeling in 2011 and 2016, I found ggplot and then the tidyverse system. And since then I'm all in and during my PhD, I did a lot of, yeah, spent a lot of time on optimizing my plots and learning about ggplot and then started contributing to mostly to Tidy Tuesday and some other visualization challenges. And I will show you a few plots also from these challenges and mainly the extension packages. So the slides you can find here, the, um, the R ladies purple link is the, um, is the easy one to type. The other one is the permanent one. I will also send that in the chat if I find it. Let's see, here we are and this is the permanent one I'm sending. Um, it's just a slide, so there will be no exercise or coding. Um, it contains a bit of code, but mostly is a gallery and showcase of the packages. So ggplot, I think all of you here know this since you are our users, um, can be used for visual data exploration here by this, uh, illustrated by these wonderful drawings by Alison Horst. And she also has a second one, which is for building a data masterpiece. And that's what I'm more interested in and in really kind of like taking all advantages and possibilities of colors and design choices and layering a ggplot. And of course, many of these um, plots would not be possible without extension packages, or of course they would be because it's R code, but you would have to write a lot of code for this. And if you're not a developer, you rely on extension packages. And these are some of my visualizations I have done. Not all of them here contain extension packages, but yeah, I think all of them, at least some, but are all done mainly in ggplot2 and our contributions um, to the Tidy Tuesday, to, to a map com contest and to the 30 day chart challenge. So these are all 100% done in R. There was no post-processing except here where I added the labels because the plot became very big and you likely can't read anything here anyway. So if you want to have a look at ggplot extensions, you can go to their gallery um, where you find the link here. Oh, the symbol doesn't work. This is a link symbol, so it doesn't matter. That's the link to the gallery. And as you can see, there are 99 registered extensions available um, um, on GitHub on, uh, on CRAN only. You can also um, turn that off. And one note here is that these extensions galleries are um, self-contained, so people, contribute the packages there. So it doesn't mean that all of the ggplot packages out there are listed here, just those where the authors contributed to this gallery. But there are many, as you can see, and you might spot some you already have used here and some of them we will cover as well. The first category I want to show you of extension packages are those which add some functionality with regard to chart types. So um, creating new charts that are not possible or harder to do with um, the default ggplot geoms. And first of all, I want to start with a set of um, packages built by David Sierberg. Um, all of them are more popular graphs and not necessarily useful graphs for scientific publications or something like this, but um, we will come to that in a minute. So this is about stream graph, the first package, and it's called ggstream. A stream graph, um, this is one example from the Financial Times here, um, is basically an area chart or density chart that goes in both directions. And it's nice to show or often used to show uh, time series data. And here it shows co um, corona deaths across time for different um, countries and um, continents. So you can nicely play with colors and, and here, for example, color the the European states in blue and um, the North American in, in uh, purplish. 
And you can already see that you, you, you can't get numbers out of these directly, but you can nicely see that the numbers overall um, have, have risen and that um, some more than the others. And it's more about a visual to explore the proportional um, parts, not exact numbers here, but it's visually appealing. And also it makes use a bit of um, the space here. So we don't generate that much white space here on the top. You can do these plots with the GG stream package as mentioned by David Sloberg. Um, these are examples from, from the GitHub vignette. So this is a basic GG stream output, a um, bit of styled. And here you can see that there are many options. For example, you can, you can add these, um, these new things towards the end or just a bit of them. You can play around with the bandwidth and stuff like that. For example, this has been used during the 30 day chart challenge by Paola um, and to show social media growth. And as you can see, um, the story is more about that it's going upwards. This was the topic of that day. So that we get more and more people joining um, the social media or yeah, active users of these social media platforms. And if I remember correctly, here there's some smoothing. So the numbers are not going down. So this is also something where you need to take care of when playing around with these charts, if it's more for visual um, aspect or if you want to be accurate, uh, you should maybe consider not to smooth it here. This is one by Georgios Karamanis um, as a contribution to Tidy Tuesday. And here you see that it's not smooth and it's again to show the growth and to kind of like this, um, the follow up games, how they take over. So this visualize the average and peak numbers of player of the um, NBA game and as you can see of course every year there's a new game coming out and people are then switching or shifting towards that game and the initial visualization on my title slide is also a steam graph and here um, it's more for um, a visual visual thing that i smoothed them out and actually this, this i did still manually but now you can do it in the package as well and um, these four st stream graphs show the appearance of the five most popular X-Men characters in the X-Men comics. And the two different shades of colors then show if, they, if the uh, main characters were costumed or casual. And then if they were depicted, if they have spoken some words, if they were thinking about something or the narrative statements. And as you can see here, for example, there's not much going on, but you can highlight who's talking. So there were, were dedicated um, episodes where just one person was talking about their life and their history. And others, there's much more going on. You can see that the gambit just appeared towards the end of the comic series by Chris Claremont. And that, for example, the Nightcrawler disappeared at some point because he died. Next one. It's Chichi Senke, uh, where you can create Senke charts and flow charts. So Senke diagrams consist of nodes and flows, and you can visualize, um, for example, incomes and um, outcoming money. Um, and then these are connected into stages. So this could be time and money or products um, going flowing from one year to the other or one month to the other. You may also know them as alluvial charts or parallel sets. So these are not exactly the same. Um, the, the Senki diagrams are exactly um, flow charts while the alluvial diagrams are scaled to show um, yeah, part of a whole usually. And these are also very popular on the Reddit, um, um, data, data is beautiful subreddit um, because there are tools out there where you can create them very easily and people then show how long it took for them to get an interview invitation or something like that. With the Gigi Senki um, package, you can create this diagram and there are, there are some more packages for that. Um, I actually didn't try it out yet or just in the, in the development phase of it. Um, so as with any Gigi plot, um, yeah, um, code, you can, you have different arguments you can adjust here. So we have fillings. You can you can play around with the transparency of the of the flows and so and, and so on. Maybe as a note here, all the packages I show you here are not wrappers. So you're not saying, okay, I want to draw a Senki diagram and then you put everything in. There are also packages out there that wrap everything inside one function. But these packages come all with um, dedicated new geoms or state functions. Um, 
that you can add to your ggplot. And of course, you can also play around with colors and fillings. And um, here I used not the GM Senke because this is not the Senke diagram, or maybe not a traditional one, um, but there's also another function which is call, called GM Senke bump. So it's a mixture of a Senke diagram and a bump chart. And these are also very popular currently. And this is the one you have also seen in the gallery. So this was also again about um, showing growth. So this is the um, global area land use from, from, the, from year one, actually, there's no year, year zero. Um, as someone corrected me. Um, and as you can see, there's not much going on. And what was interesting here that um, Europe, for example, and India were kind of like early adopters of land use practices, at least according to the data. And at some point Europe took over and the North America popped up and Africa is also um, very popular or very high rank, highly ranked on the second rank um, in the last decade. This is also, um, kind of the Senke bump chart. This is not made in R. This is the app and flow visual by Robert Janicek, um, which I like a lot aesthetically. Um, it shows um, music genres over time. And as you have seen with my visualization, it became very long, but if I would kind of like shrink the width of the plot, it wouldn't be very nice looking and um, also hardly readable than for given decades and years. And I asked David if this is possible as well. And um, so you can see, you can also interact with the package developers and people come up with solutions for this. So this is what, I'm not sure if this was the name David came up with, trumpet plot, or if this is an actual plot, but um, you can even do these kind of things now with the package. There's actually also a GG bump package I'm not discussing here. Um, it's also from David. And um, yeah, all of the three packages are very great to make all of these yeah, charts that, that flow around, I would call them. So the next one is GG Gibbous. Um, this is a package which creates moon charts or which allows you to create moon charts. I'm not sure everyone knows what a moon chart is. So first let's explore that. Mm. So moon charts, the name suggested, is a, is a circular plot type. And it's similar to a pie chart. And here you can see results from a study by Robert Kosara um, about the signed error and the response time um, to both of these charts and some more. So this would be a moon chart type. And this is the classical pie chart. And as you can see, they perform um, very similar to the signed error. So this means how good you can estimate how much the blue part shows in relation to the gray part or to the whole. And um, the response time is even better for moon charts. Moon charts are also limited to two categories um, because you have kind of like the, the bright um, side of the moon and the dark side of the moon, which is also a good thing. All pie charts are also best used for a few categories. And I like the visual appearance of these moon charts. And there is the GG Gibbous package to create them. And this is um, a combination of a line chart and, and some moon charts. Um, I also created for a Tidy Tuesday, where the moon, the yellow moon shows um, black people living in freedom and the red um, black people in slavery about um, across times in the US from 1790 to 1870, um, where um, yeah, all of them became free in the US, but before you can see that in the Southern states, the part of the red is very, very high compared to the other states. Um, so there was only a low proportion of free black Americans. I use it also again um, for this Euro Europe map of European um, electricity generation in 2018. And here the um, green part shows how much of the um, energy is generated as renewable energy and um, versus the others. And as you can see, for example, a quickly spot is that Norway is 100% green, according to that data, Sweden has a half share and that there are some which barely have renewables in their continent at the 2018. One of, of my favorite packages definitely, at least from the usage and from the diversity of plots you can create with this is ggdisk um, by Matthew Case. And you can visualize distributions and uncertainties with these. 
and Matthew Kane, story from the West. And this is a list of um, mostly stat layers. You can, um, this package adds to your GG portfolio. And as you can see, there, there are many charts you can, you can play around with. Um, violin plots, for example, or density curves. Um, I also very much like these interval strips and also these gradient intervals, which are nice. Um, some of these plots can also be done in ggplot, but I actually like the performance and the arguments or the variety of arguments uh, a bit, bit more with this package. And I often come back also to these if I draw violin plots or any kind of density curves, rain cloud plots, for example. So this is my not of cup of coffee, not my cup of coffee visualizations, which shows here zoomed in um, single ratings for coffee beans that have been tasted um, by the Coffee Institute um, across a, a gradient of rating points and the interval here. So both of the geoms are actually coming from the ggdisc package. So this is that dots for the dot plot and that interval for the strip here, and these show then. Um, the 5, 25, 50, and 100%, I assume. No, this is 75%. And it's a, it's a nice summary plot to show distributions and where most of the data falls. So of course, this is a bit redundant here because we have the dots and the strips, but I found it nice to connect these points with these. Um, and if you only have a few points, it's definitely easier to spot them. And in addition, I added the triangles and the text um, labels for the lowest values because th these were more interesting than the best ratings and um, the median points with a classical GM text and a GM point. Here's another use case of GGDist um, combining again the interval here showing the range of temperatures in Berlin over, over the, uh, across the month over a year and then also a GM half I showing these distributions. One of maybe the most popular add-on packages when it comes to chart types is GG Riches, at least what I see out there on Twitter. These are called um, rich line plots. Um, the inspiration, at least that's the story behind it, is comes from the cover of the Joy Division um, LP Unknown Pleasures, um, which is actually a data visualization of, I guess, radio waves. And um, these are very, very popular. So you likely have seen them printed on a t-shirt also in real life. Um, there are people having this kind of <laughs> um, visual tattooed on their back or somewhere else. And um, they are also often used to create landscapes um, or other chart types, but often also in the mapping context as here by Cohen. Maybe a bit of history as well. So um, first they were called joy plots as suggested by Jenny Brown. Um, because they're coming from the Joy Division um, LP cover, but actually um, the Joy Division has a kind of like a dark history, so it's um, related to sexual workers during the NS regime. So Klaus Wilkie, who has written this package, um, decided to rename the GG Joy package to GG Riches and all of the functions as well. And also the plot type, you shouldn't call Joy Plots anymore, but in the best case, which line plot. So here's an actual um, Richland plot and Klaus. So this um, Klaus is now um, um, a main contributor to ggplot2. Um, he has written this great book, Fundamentals of Data Visualization, which is also available online for free. And this is a figure out of this book that shows how you can visualize multiple distribution at once. And you have seen one approach for the temperature. So you could place them all next to each other, but as with the Joy Division cover, we have overlapping density curves, which makes it nice to see patterns here. So this is again temperature data across the year. So basically the same chart as shown before, but for a different city. And um, you can clearly see the shift towards the high temperatures during summer. This can be also very helpful to simplify plots. So this is um, again a time series. Now the time series is on, on the x-axis and the percentage of um, uh, female babies, baby names in the US. And as you can see, there's a lot of overplotting going on here. It might be okay to see, at least to see the big bulk here and then it's going down due to the diversity of names 
in more recent times, but you could also visualize this as a rich line plot, for example. This is a very old one of mine. I never really put out there. Um, this was basically my first use of GG witches back then. I think it was in 2017. Um, and here it's a bit easier to see the trends um, also over time. So it's highlighting names um, over the decade. So that's why we see the shift here. Um, but you can also nicely see that the, that the hills get lower and lower here and do not even overlap anymore. This is another example from the book by Klaus Wilkie, where um, it shows the nominate score of Democrats and Republicans in the US. And um, so just to showcase that this is really actually a plot which can be helpful to investigate patterns. So here you can clearly see the, the um, drift of the Republicans towards the right hand, while the Democrats more or less stay stable and have a light, slight shift here and get more steeper and clearly making up um, yeah, some a gap here where there is no overlap between the two groups anymore. Okay, that's it for the chart type part. Um, here's a list of other packages or the, the first ones are those I've mentioned here, but there are many, many more I tried out or ha I have on my list. So I'll give you a second to look at these. Maybe one comment here, so there you find a pie chart. Of course, you can do a, create a pie chart in ggplot as well, but this has a dedicated GM arc bar for this. So you don't need to mess around with um, chord polar and parallel sets and alluvial charts. So all fall in the same group, more or less than the Senke diagram, or they often get confused with each other. And Thomas Lynn Pedersen prefers to call them all parallel sets, um, but there's also a dedicated package for um, alluvial charts. Next up, we have um, labeling annotation functionality added by extension packages. And I want to start also with one of my main favorite packages, GGForce, which also um, was listed in the chart type section. This is due to the diversity of things GGForce comes with. So it adds a lot of genes, but it also adds um, some other functionality and yeah, providing missing functionality is part of the package description to GGBot. And this is just some, some gallery of things you can do. There are many, many more. So you can, for example, zoom in into a plot or you can make these Xena charts. Um, you can actually draw with splines or make Voronoi maps. We want to focus on the labeling part. So this is what I want to show you next. And there are four functions that all belong to the same family. It's the GM underscore mark underscore something family. And um, with this, you can either highlight different groups or also highlight um, single points or single groups with a nice filtering argument inside the aesthetics. And um, there are four different shapes for them, how you can highlight them. These are no um, clustering results. This is just about drawing geometries around all the points. So there's no, no statistical method behind it. It's just highlighting the full group. That's why you get, for example, a very large circle here. And um, GM Hall is likely the best, at least in this case, to show really where the group actually is because here you can't tell. And the nice thing about this is that it's very easy to use. It's a GM you can add to your plot. You can easily control with the filter argument and some others. And as many of Thomas Pedersen's um, packages, it's it's full of arguments that are helpful. And one thing you can do, for example, is to add a, add a subtitle or description to that. You see the, these, these fancy, I don't know how to call them, steps. Um, you can also turn them off or change the, change the um, appearance of these. And of course, you can also mess around with all the colors and fillings and fonts and everything. And yeah, just a comment on the chart here. So this is a chart which is not intended that you can see any patterns with the colors. This was just one of the requests for, for the original New York Times graph. And um, it's a, mostly about um, highlighting the last three days. This was on the 1st of June, the last three days, um, of, uh, in Portland, Oregon, where the temperatures have been very, very high due to the heat dome phenomenon. Jay Kaup, Another example, um, also used this for um, another corona related chart to um, annotate points in time what happened here. So you can see he also used different um, 
font types here, uh, uh, font pastes here for for the title and then with long descriptions to everything where there's a quote actually. You can also see that sometimes it's not work, really working well. You get overlaps with the data. Here the red line is um, broken. So, so there's some internal logic where to place these um, labels and you can also play around with the parameters on that. But sometimes they just fall on it, fall on something where they don't, they don't want them to, to be. So I had also already some many, many iterations to place them where I want them to be. And this is another use case. So you could also turn off um, the, the geom, the hull or the rectangle whatsoever, and just use the functionality of these um, annotation lines. So here I just highlight the both parts of, of the stumbell plot. And you can do this with this part of code. Then you have a bit of expansion for the line, but um, you remove the geometry. Another very popular package for text labeling is GG Repel. I think it's one of the most downloaded or most start GPod extension packages. And that for a reason, first it's out there for a long time. So I've used it also on my rich line plot or on the um, density plot on the left hand for the rich lines. Um, so in 2017, it's maybe one of the first extension packages. And um, yeah, it takes, control of your of your label. So if you use GM text, um, the text labels are placed exactly on top of the point. You can adjust these. So you move them to the left, to the right, or to the top or to the bottom. But the problem is if not always it's um, it's enough to move them all to the top because if you have scatter plots, for example, as here, you can see you may want to place them around all these points. And if you move them all to the left, there will still be overlap. And that's what GG Repel is for. So this is a traditional GM text. The package was built by Kamil Slovikovsky. And as you can see, some labels are outside of the panel area. They are on top of the points. There are here no overlapping text labels, but closely. And this is how it looks like if you use GM text repel. So all of them are placed inside with the right arguments and none of them are close to each other. And I actually used it for my first contribution to Tidy Tuesday in April, May, 2019. Here on the right hand, I zoom in a bit. So this is the part where I use GG Repel. So I wanted to have all the top movies on the, on the right hand. And you can do that with um, an xlim argument, for example, where you place all the labels um, or pull all the labels outside of a given limit. The same I used here, for example, for a timeline. And also to illustrate that that actually works very well. So this is just a part of the visualizations. I flipped it here, as you can see, but there are many, many lines in, in, um, in the short range of time. So this is about the emperors of Rome when they were um, um, reigning. And um, you can see that there was, was a lot going on in some of the years and still with, with a good aspect ratio, GG Repel handles all of this very well. And a newer thing that was added to the package, or at least I found it just a few months ago, is that you can have also more, more fancy um, segments here to label your, your data. Um, I used it here, for example, for the summary bar on the right hand. Again, I will zoom in a bit. And here, these were too close, and I found these aesthetically very pleasing to place them. And it shows the labels in the right order here, but without over plotting and with these small lines showing that there are actually several segments which are all below um, 1%. And there are many, many arguments as well. You can explore here to make different shapes here. So there's an inflect argument, um, there's a square argument, there's a shape argument and many, many more. Last package on the labeling part is ggtext. And actually this is not just about labeling, it's all about text and it supports um, or it adds support to ggpod for text rendering so that you can use R markda uh, markdown or HTML formatting for your labels. And these are the examples from, again, from Klaus Wilkie who has de developed the package um, from, the, from the package vignette. 
just to showcase what you can do. So you can add boxes um, either, either to the theme itself or as a geometry. And here's another way of looking at this. So this is illustrating all of the use cases. So first of all, we have theme elements, basically two. Um, here the, we have a subtype. So element markdown, which um, control, is a replacement for all element underscore text parts in the ggbot theme. We then can use, for example, different uh, font faces. So here, just illustrating that you can use um, bold and, and um, regular formatting. And then there's element text box and element text box simple. So simple as some um, default settings, which you can use. And then you can um, make colored boxes, which also include a word wrapping. So I didn't include a break here. This was all done by ggText. So this is where it really becomes powerful. If you have long text, you can use element, element text box or element text box simple to, to break the text. And also you can then have, of course, outlines or backgrounds. And the other two things is, adds, is geometries. So there's a geom rich text, which is basically the same as the element markdown, but as a geom, so you can place it on the panel. And geom text box, which is basically the same as element text box, um, but again, allows you to place it on the um, panel. And as you can see here, again, I didn't include the line breaks here, but that's due to geom text box functionality. And you can also use it in, um, um, in your data frame, of course. So these labels here on the right hand, as you can see, um, sometimes are colored um, completely and sometimes are only partly colored. Um, so this is about the main characters in, in, in the TV sitcom Friends and the main characters are colored and all their partners, um, which are not main characters are grayish. So this is about how often um, people speak about these these uh, relationships or partnerships um, during the full, full uh, series. And this is how you can style this with um, HTML code actually. So this is something you can't do with Markdown anymore because there you can make italic or bold text, for example. But here with the um, HTML text, so B is bold and then we have a style argument and then you can actually change much more than just the color and the face. You can also change the line height or the font family. Um, and then you always have a closing tag. And in case of both names are labeled, this is um, both names are in here and the other one is outside in the other case. And this you can add to your data frame by, by a mutate call. So I don't show, show you here in detail, but I can we can have a look later if you like. But basically what we use is the key and based on the key, then we, we um, apply the color and some gluing or pasting of, of different things together. And then we end up with these strings here, which we then can map in the ggplot. So we map the partners to the y-axis, this column. And then after applying all the other things in the theme, we overwrite the element text with element markdown and that's how it looks like. Um, note here it's element markdown still, even though we write HTML text. So it's the same element for both of them. There's no element HTML. So I might prefer something like element render so that it, it's not confusing for people who want to write HTML, but you get used to it. So always use element markdown if you want to render some text. And actually I've used it um, a lot here. So this is GM textbox and GM rich text. And I will show you the, hopefully, no. I will show you the um, the um, plot without the formatting. And as you can see, I added all the text labels on a on a GG plot. So this is actually another moon chart um, I've plotted, another point chart to illustrate so I make draw the legend for these. The same here, and then these are GM text boxes with the wrapping. And you see that there's also some formatting here, bold and here below as well. This is another text box. This is another text box, and this is another text box. Um, or maybe part of this one, I can't remember. And this is then um, GM rich text with the formatting. So here I use different font faces and different font sizes and the same here. And again, you can also pass this as a data frame so you don't have to, to um, write one GM text or one annotate for each of these with a different color, but you can do this now and all, all in one step. And this is just some 
some parts of the figures I showed you before and from one I didn't show you that I'm heavily relying on this package. Um, and I also think it's a great way of highlighting the data and to get rid of a legend. So here the words are highlighted, um, which then refer to the color in the moon chart. Um, here it refers to the different bars and here the same as a legend replacement. And I think this is a very modern and very clever use of color to make sure that the reader in the beginning knows what it is about and also to link the text to your graph. And this is um, again a, a GM text box, so I didn't need to take care of the word wrapping here. And you can also do other stuff. So Klaus is actively um, developing this package, I guess, or at least there, there are um, some stack over flow issues that pop up from also solve things like this. So you can, for example, highlight one of your facets in a different way by creating an element text box highlight. This is a custom function and he shows you how to do this on Stack Overflow. And um, I adjusted this code a bit and also have this in my tutorial on my blog. And lastly, multi-panel figures. Um, the first one is geo facets. So this can be Consider as a multi-panel, um, so the package can be used to create tie grid maps. It's these are small multiples. And how does this look like? I have first one example again from the package vignette. So the package was written by Ryan Haven. I think it's also a bit older already, but it still works um, smoothly and perfectly. I use it pretty often, especially also for the Tidy Tuesday contributions. And um, this is one for the US, just to illustrate how it looks like um, with the basic or default ggplot theme. So um, it replaces the traditional map um, with, with yeah, tiles or small multiples for each of the states or whatever you pick. And um, the nice thing about this is that you then can, within each of these, you can show different variables, x and y variable, not just amounts, for example. So these, is, these are some um, unemployment rates over time. And um, it gives the same weight to each of the states. So if it's, if it's not about of the, of the area, this is a nice approach also to make um, sure that all of the states are perceived in the same way equally. And as you may know, in the US, it might be very difficult to map anything to the, to the east, especially the northern east. So this is also a nice way to make sure it's placed in a nice style. I just saw today on Twitter a graphic by Bloomberg, actually an interactive one, where they also use time maps just to illustrate that this is a common thing and a popular thing to do and also a very helpful one. So this is about the vaccination in the US and um, different groups. And here, this was just the screenshot that was shared on Twitter. Um, but what you can spot easily that if, if you select black, they never reach a greater share of black people that are vaccinated. And they're catching up in almost all of the states besides NYC and Oregon and others. But um, yeah, they're always less. This, had, this wasn't done in R, I believe, but this is one, an output in, um, from ggplot. So this is uh, a Europe geofacet by Jack Davison, all again on the energy generation data. So the same as I've shown you with the moon chart. And basically, these are always three stack bars showing the share um, for each of the years. So from top to bottom, 2016 to 18. And they are not that many changes here, but you could nicely um, evaluate each of the countries and compare them to each other. Or you could also use it again just by um, placing a symbol for something and not using a full chart type. So this is also a geo facet where I turned off most of the other things. There are still some tiny labels. And this was to highlight that um, most of the countries um, never never have played um, in the volleyball world tour. And these, with those which are yellow have, um, have won more, than, more games than they have lost. So there are only a few countries which dominate this um, FIVB world tour. And there are many, many that have never even participated here, which are the empty smaller circles. That's still a tile map, but it doesn't show any, any trends or stack bars or something like this. And a bit different approach of um, multiple panel figures um, is the patchwork package. I hope most of you know by now, but um, still 
there are people out there who don't use it. I'm, I'm always, every time I teach this or talk about it, I'm pretty excited about this package um, because it made my life, life very, very easy. So there are many, many packages out there to compose ggplot and um, all of them work well and I've used them before, but what actually was the problem there that I never could remember how to build them together. Some of them were a bit hard to control or a bit geeky. So there's, for example, cowplot, there's egg, there's other grid packages. Um, I think ggpubr also supports some placing. My patchwork is ridiculously simple. It's again a package by Thomas Lee Patterson, who's also a main contributor to ggplot. And actually I love to show this drawing. I love to show all the drawings by Alison, but this one um, also highlights the full package potential or the most common package potential. So we have a plan. We want to frame the three ggplots we have like this. So two um, squares on the top and a rectangle below spanning the full width of this. And this is the code you need to write for that. P1 by P3. So some place next to each other and the divider means place it below that. And since it's grouped, it's um, placed below both of them. So just assume you have two plots stored. I want scatter plot with some ggforce annotations and some uh, rain cloud plots, which makes use of the ggdist functionality of the half eye. And we store them in P1 and P2 as objects. And then you can simply, by saying P1 divided by P2, put them together on top of each other. And then with the plot layout functions, for example, you can then manipulate the heights or if they place next to each other, the widths of these. So proportionally, which means that um, the, low, um, the P2 should be smaller than, than the P1. And then there's more functionality to add labels, title to the full panels, and uh, a lot of clever things again, as I already mentioned, is always the case for the packages by Thomas. Um, coming back to the energy facet here, you've already seen that this text box is a, is a single ggplot. And so I stitched them together with um, patchwork. So this is how it looks like. So these are all facets. Um, these are also three facets. And then I, with the, set, um, with the um, vertical separator, you can say that they are definitely placed next to each other. So first the legend then the main plot and then wrap the renewables divided by nuclear divided by thermal. And then with the plot layout, I say that the middle one should be the main plot and the other one should be the columns towards the left and the right. And then since this, these two three on the right hand are nested, they are also um, applied the width is applied to all three of them, of course. And what's also nice about Patchwork, which is also the case for some of the other packages, it aligns the plots very nicely, which is most often what you want. Sometimes it gets a bit problematic because if you have, for example, a flip bar chart with long labels and then another scatter plot with numeric labels and the numeric labels are placed um, very far from the axis to make sure that the, um, the axis text labels are aligned. Um, but it might be a case that this is already fixed. With this, I want to end. So um, you can find me on the internet. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on GitHub. Um, on GitHub, I share at least all the Tidy Tuesday GGPod codes, but also many more. So if you are curious um, how to build these plots, you can have a look there. Also for the other people contributing to Tidy Tuesday, of course, everyone is usually sharing their codes. That's common practice there. And um, I want to highlight two things on my blog, maybe. So. I think most people, well, yeah, the, the, the most um, popularity got my ggbot 2 tutorial for beautiful plotting in R, which is pretty extensive. Um, so if you want to have a look how to do some things, um, it's basically going how to change text on the x-axis, how to draw a line, how to add annotation labels, and then the evolution of a ggplot, um, where I just show going basically from a default ggplot, trying different geoms, and then stitch you together several of them and design it a bit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I really uh, like this presentation. It's fabulous. Uh, and thank, thank you, you for uh, your generosity and uh, for sharing with us um, those uh, beautiful extensions of uh, ggplot2. Yeah, thanks uh, to the developers, I have to say. Yeah, uh, thanks to the, the, for the developers and for you for, for the share. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think uh, we have some few questions. Mm -hmm. 
sure. the first one is from Martin. Uh, she said she really loves the uh, package uh, river plot, um, especially the mixing of colors. Uh, but uh, this is base R. So is something like that possible in uh, GG uh, Sankey or other GG packages? About which plot? I didn't get that. Uh, about uh, a river, a river plot. Ah, the, the, yes. the river plot. Can you help me which one? Um, river, river, river. The rich line plot, you mean? Uh, she is asking if there is a package in uh, yeah. ggplot ex uh, ggplot to extensions like uh, river plot because river plot is uh, is using is used to mix colors uh, but in uh, base R, not in uh, okay i have to admit I'm, I'm not sure what a river plot is actually um, so i would have to look first uh, how these how these um, are made yeah, of course, there are some packages that are only provided in the um, in the basic R world. Um, yeah, so since I don't know how this plot looks like, ah, Martina says she, she will find a picture. <laughs> um, so yeah, go through the gallery. There might be an extension. Um, if you feel confident, try to, try to um, create one package if it's something people can use out there or maybe someone um, can help you with that. So I also didn't write a GM package. Um, so yeah, that's all I can say. Um, if I see it, I can say if, if there's a package or if you can create it from scratch, maybe. Thank you for this answer. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, we have another question from Manika. Um, she said that uh, today she got to know uh, that we can use art to make art, uh, like generative art. Yeah. Uh, so she is asking if you have uh, tried making generative art and also how ggplot extensions can be used to make generative art. Yeah, um, so I'm not that much into generative art, so I, I really like it, but I have already enough on my bucket list to add uh, gener generative art as another ggplot hobby. Um, but I really I also follow the community and there's some, some nice stuff out there. So I know there are some dedicated ggplot packages for making art, but often people just use what's out there. So there are also many experimental packages. So for example, the gg pattern package or uh, things with ggblur or then the ggfx, I didn't talk about that. It was in my previous slideshow, but I had to remove some of the packages. So ggfx now allows you to apply filters and um, blends to your ggplot. Um, yeah, some people just do generative art with lines, points and rectangles. So it's a bit of a difficult question because it depends, of course, what you want to do. Um, but yeah, it's a very interesting field and I definitely like the aesthetics and I used to make art with my plots, but I wouldn't say yeah, gener generative art is not related to data anymore and all my plots until now had some data in the back. Uh, thanks. We have also another question from Martin. She said, does the, B, uh, the BSS tie code also work when you need to, to uh, the LMD to PDF? Which code? Uh, the code is, uh, if you can see it in the chat, is BB, uh, BSS style. No, can you see? It's, I think it's about uh, HTML. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, try to find the question. So can you add? Mm -hmm. I can't find it, unfortunately. I will send it to you in the private yeah. chat. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Let's go down. Ah, ah, okay. The, ah, the, the HTML tags. Now I got it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, when you need to knit the RMD to PDF. Yeah, it, um, it also works. Um, it depends on the output of your graphic device, actually. Um, so it's it's stored inside the plot and um, 
it's it's not nothing related to HTML interactivity. It's just how to encode the um, properties of the of the font. And um, if you, for example, I always export to PDF my, my plots to PDF. And if you use um, the Cairo PDF device, for example, this is a pretty sure shot that it works with custom fonts and coloring. And also with the new rec package, which is by now also the, the default now for GGSafe in the latest GGBot version. Um, it works actually pretty well, at least for me on Windows um, to output also custom fonts and font styling. Yeah. So I don't see a point why it shouldn't work in the RMD, but you may need to set up some device settings. Okay. Uh, we have also another question from Paolo, uh, but first uh, he said, uh, all congratulations to you. Uh, and he said also you are an artist. And uh, he said the code for the Palmer Penguin scatter plot uh, where you used JOMark is available somewhere. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, and how demanding of processing uh, these plots can be when uh, needing to be uh, when needing to PDF? Um, not this one. Um, yeah. So adding the the GG text um, part can can be a bit um, demanding actually. Um, the the geomark performs very well. Oh, oh. Come maybe. <laughs> so you want to search it. Um, the geomark itself performs very well. Um, as always, when exporting ggplot, again, it depends if you export it to vector or to raster devices. Um, and if you, yeah, also depends on your data. So for example, it will not work um, very well if you, in general, will take it their time if you export a vector graphic with 100,000 points and more. Um, so in general, um, I wouldn't say it it really decreases the time, it increases the time, but uh, there might be cases where, where you get into trouble. So for GM text, for example, or for any text label, it's always a good idea to check if you actually plot one label or many, many more. Um, and now it disappeared. Um, and sometimes you are plotting hundreds of text labels behind each other, and that's why it's taking time. So um, in that case, you may want to use that equals unique uh, to make sure that there's only um, plotted once. And then I realized that I did, did this mistake once, and then with ggtext, and it took a very, very long time because of me to render all the text labels also for my PDF output. And with regard to the code, um, yeah, actually, this is part of um, a talk I gave at the Outlier Conference. It's the GGBot Wizardry talk. And I send it to you in this. Oh, well, there's a personal message to everyone. There you go. And there you find um, an RMD file and also the original R file to download. And I think if you click here, you will find all the penguin plot parts. So, yep. <laughs> we still have some other questions. Mm -hmm, um, sure. <laughs> we have another question from Pau. Um, he is asking if um, uh, you can recommend any map packages uh, because uh, I think he is using uh, GGMap, uh, but uh, it's uh, an API, so it requires yeah. some credit card. Uh, yeah. So if you can uh, rec recommend a similar one to this package, if you know it. To ggmap, no, I can't actually. Um, I mean, ggmap is exactly for that, that you can access maps and you don't need to take care of, of it your own. Um, so I'm usually building my own maps with, with the SF package, um, which is not yeah, dedicated ggbot extension packages, but for spatial data and you can work with it in ggbot with the gmsf, but of course then you need to add everything on your own. So if you want to have labels and if you want to have streets, for example, you need to do it on your own. Um, the benefit of GGMap is that you get this basically without any effort. Um, the downside is you have access. And on the other hand, also that these are tile maps. So these are, um, these are images in the back. So if you really want to change this appearance, um, you might want to build it from scratch anyway. I don't know any package that provides base maps without accessing any providers. No. Uh, okay, we have another question from Virginia. 
she was wondering if you edit your images with another software or they are 100% done in R. Yeah, they are, besides the, the Senke bump chart about the area land use um, about time, all of them were 100% um, ggplot. Um, the one with the land cover, this was like me trying how this works. So, but I basically created all of the details and just the text labeling I did then manually in Figma because I have to admit, so for tight Tuesday, this is actually the challenge and depending on what you want to do. So if it's really about automation and you want to create many, many plots and over and over again, and it's a good thing to have it 100% GG plot, but of course, adding all these labels to more complex plots to report a tiny Tuesday, which is spare time hobby, uh, at some point gets a bit tedious and um, too much effort. So um, in that case, this was not a tiny Tuesday. I felt free to add some of the text uh, by hand, but um, you can do all of this 100% in GG Plotters. Thank you. Uh, we have also another question from Kaja. Um, she said she's currently struggling with finding something that's easy to handle for scientific public publication uh, when she is doing statistics on categorical data. Uh, she is actually using ggsniff or ggpuber. Uh, ggpuber. Mm -hmm. Puber. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, they work well for numeric variable, but not really for uh, what she, she has to do. Uh, okay. At the moment, she she is uh, trying to do grouped bar bars for just counts. Uh, she recently uh, found this stats plot, but not tried it uh, yet. Hmm. Uh, do you have any suggestion uh, for her by any chance? So if it's about the statistical part, this is not really related to ggplot, of course. I mean, you can do your stats with any package, so they are the basic R packages, but there are also the tiny reverse packages out there. Um, so I don't know all of these packages very well. Um, I know them by name. Um, if I'm right, at least some of them are wrappers around ggplot functionality where you rely on the presets. So it's a good thing if you don't want to want to mess around with, with the true ggplot syntax, um, but of course you're a bit limited here and there. So I'm not sure about the exact problems. But of course, stacked stop um, bar plots or touch bar plots you can easily create with ggplot um, itself. I assume it's also, also about the labeling of significant groups or outcomes. Um, and I think the uh, mentioned GG, how it's called, the stats package. So there's a stats package for that. I'm also not using it, but um, I think it's GG stats plot, yeah. yeah. Not sure if this helped, but. Yeah. Um, I think this is uh, the last question uh, from Cedric. Mm -hmm. uh, while creating a chart, how do you check the evolution of your chart to reach the final result as the preview in our studio? Um, is fixed uh, size not really representative of your final result? Uh, no. Also, how do you set your chart size uh, as the font and other component can become really tiny or too big? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a common problem um so maybe first my approach so my approach is as mentioned i export to pdf so while i'm exploring the data or while i'm kind of like setting up everything so changing colors or something like that i don't need really need the final output but when it really comes to placing boxes and setting sizes of points and transparencies and all these kind of things i always go the route like saving opening the file having a look going back to ggplot and that's the tedious part and this that's actually also what takes so much time compared to a design tool to add annotations because you have to you have kind of like a coordinate based approach to place the labels and then you need to export it this, this may take time or might may be bought i don't know um and if it takes time, so if you have more ambitious plots, then you may also wait a few seconds or maybe even longer. So this takes time opening the file again and so on and so on. Um, so until a certain point, I rely on the viewer, but this is a this is a common common thing. I also get during um, during workshops. So let me see if I can quickly find the package. So what we actually well, mostly Alice has has done. Um, is the camcorder package we still didn't really share publicly but it's there and, and the idea was basically based on these um, making of animations we started at some point to do for our ggplots 
to um, contributions to Teddy Tuesday, where you can basically see that, like, of course, we don't come up with the final plot and there might be mistakes or also circles, going circles, trying things which didn't work. So this is one of Georgios, one by me, and we two, together with Alice, who approached us, built this package, or many Alice. We were the testers. <laughs> And there's a GG record file. And even though you don't want to create these kind of animations, this might be an interesting package for you because what this does is it saves um, a copy in the back every time you run a ggplot.code. So you enter GG record and then you can set the width and the height. And because it's saving a, a plot, it's showing you the plot in the viewer pane and not in the, in the plotting pane. So it shows you the final outcome directly inside the viewer. So in the same place where you usually see your ggplot output but with the height and the width and the pixels and whatsoever you have created. And in addition, it will also save that plot. And if you don't need it, it goes just to a temp temporary directory and is removed afterwards, but you could also access this. And then you can just plot the things. You can even update in between. If you say, okay, I want to have a different aspect ratio or a higher DPI level, you can resize it. And um, yeah, and then you can, with GG Playback, you can turn it into an animation, but that's not the part we are talking about here. But the main point here is that it um, has some functionality to show you the plot as it is in the final version. If you don't change the aspect ratio or the other arguments later, that's of course always the case. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, will share, yeah, I will share a link as well. So here you go. So, so as mentioned, there's still not everything solved, but for PNG and stuff, it should work very well. PDF, there we still have some issues. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for answering all those questions. Yeah, sure. <laughs> thank you for uh, your patience and uh, for answering everyone. Uh, I think we are done uh, with the question. And mm -hmm. uh, I invite all the participants if uh, they have other uh, question uh, to reach uh, out uh, to us or uh, to reach out uh, to you. Uh, and also I want to tell them uh, that uh, the recording will be available in uh, our YouTube channel, uh, the Our Ladies YouTube uh, Tunis YouTube channel. Uh, I put the link in the chat so uh, you can um, get uh, a notification uh, when uh, this uh, video will be available. Yeah, yeah, I think Yasmin is saying that uh, how can uh, we contact Cedric? Uh, so Cedric, if you uh, if you can sure. share. Uh... Yeah, someone mentioned just that I have a typo in my own, own uh, web page. That's true. Um, so um, yeah, you can find me on Twitter if you're, if, if you're on Twitter. Now I also see I mix these up, so I definitely need to take care of my, my food next time better. Um, so you can find me on Twitter or you can go to the homepage, cedricshera.com, the same as you um, hit if you wanted to see the slides. And there you find all my contact details. And yeah, feel free to write me a personal message on Twitter or whatsoever. Uh, so I'm getting uh, positive, uh, positive feedbacks. Uh, from this, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's fine. It's in the chat. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I want to share something, uh, uh, some of them with you. So uh, <laughs> Sunny is saying that uh, this is a great, great talk. He appreciates uh, your passion and the hard work. And he said, thank you uh, very much, Dr. Cedric. Also, I have um, a question. Yes, uh, a question from Margarita. She is asking if you, if you give online workshops. Yes, um, so I don't have any um, own workshops, pre-recorded stuff. So I'm, I'm from time to time I give workshops. So time, sometimes internally, sometimes externally. Uh, so I think the next workshop will come up in November, which is publicly open. Uh, it's together with Fusalia courses, but I'm also thinking about how to make this available for more people and maybe also to pre-record. But currently, yeah, there's nothing which you can taken right now, but um, yeah, keep an eye on my on my Twitter or, or on the Fusalia page. There might be some slots still available for November. So this is a one week course, but I also, if, if you're working for a company and you're interested, I'm also giving um, two, days train, um, two days trainings or two hour trainings as you like. Uh, 
And before closing this uh, amazing meetup, I invite all the participants, uh, if uh, they um, actually try one of those extension of Hashiplot 2 to tag uh, our ladies, Jonas, and uh, tag you yeah, sure. in Twitter. Uh, so uh, we can share uh, with us, uh, we can share with each other uh, those, uh, those graphs and uh, make uh, maybe some improvement. So yeah, would be thank great. you. Thank you uh, very much, Cedric. Yeah, thank you and, as well. Thanks for joining everyone. And uh, thanks everyone for joining and, uh, uh, and uh, hope to see all of you in uh, our next meetup. Thank you. Enjoy your day or evening. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.